we just point out the elephant in the room? Social psychology is very white. Are you shocked? I'm not shocked. And yes, there are obviously people who practice social psychology who are racialized as white. However, the problem is that most of what we know in social psychology and those who actually practice it, it seems to be reproduced from a certain perspective. So this practice of social psychology can be kind of biased and let's say weird. So should we cancel social psychology? Hi, my name is Momoba Ogoro, founder of GERM and social psychologist. And if you want to learn how to unify across differences, make sure you're subscribing to our channel. Earlier, I said social psychology is weird. And that was not to be jumping onto the toxic gossip train. Well, maybe it's a little weird, but <laughs> when I say weird, I do not mean only weird as in strange. I mean weird as in an acronym. Let me explain. As early as 2008, psychologists had pointed out the fact that social sciences in general and the research that it involves neglected considering the experiences of 95% of the world's population to instead focus on people from the USA, UK, and if you're lucky, the rest of the the European population. That particular article examined 4,000 studies over 20 years and found that 95% of behavioral and social science research used sample subjects from wealthy English-speaking countries. It was not until 2010 where some social psychologists coined the term weird psychology. Weird is a clever acronym where the W stands for Western, the E stands for educated, the I stands for industrialized, the R stands for rich, and the D stands for democratic. In simple terms, English speaking, highly educated, Westerners, and who are generally racialized as whites. That last part was kind of my addition, but you get the gist. And I, oh. You can guess that the acronym weird was also used to describe these people as a bit, let's say, unusual compared to the rest of the global population. So they do not represent the entire human race and nor does their research as well. The studies I just mentioned reached these conclusions by reviewing and arguing against many theories that were deemed to be universal without adequate data and research to back it up from different contexts. As you can imagine, these revelations blew the minds of social psychologists and blew the minds of social psychology out of the water. It's not that most of the research or the work done in social psychology is wrong, not at all, but that most of it at this time is narrow, incomplete, and not representative of the most multitude of perspectives, cultures, and experiences that exist in our world. <laughs> Get a day. Other social psychologists argue that most social psychological research lacks generalizability of its findings due to several factors that exist. One of them is that is simply biased, let's say. I know, it sounds boring. However, most social psychological research and the conclusions that they have that affect both you and I is conducted in a university environment with undergraduate students in, let's say, white English-speaking Western countries. This bias exists because researchers must constantly publish content to stay relevant within their fields, just like your favorite content creator. And of course, the only way to get participants reliably is, let's say, tempting students in terms of course credits. I have been there myself. Imagine basing our human rights policies, our laws, and our action plans on the research that's conducted on overworked and underpaid undergraduate students. Yeah, I'm not gonna be doing that. In short, we are generalizing what we know about a tiny subset of people to the rest of the world. The other factor is cultural variation. Did you know that the lives of people in the UK differ greatly to the lives of people, let's say, in Sri Lanka, Australia, Guatemala, Korea? Well, duh. Oh my God! Wow! The truth is that we know more about people, let's say in the UK or Western world, that we do in non-Western world based on the social psychological research that exists today. It's not that these groups of people are more biologically different or greater or less than the other, is that different countries and cultures come with certain types of behaviors that are not really well looked at based on the research that we have today. So creating differences in the way people play and perceive their environment and understanding that on a social psychological level is hugely important when it comes to applying it in the real world. According to the research looking into weird countries, those who tend to be in those countries tend to be kind of individualistic and go back to our previous video to understand what that is. 
and other factors of weird psychology being the king of the social sciences include the long tradition of conducting this research in weird countries. The fact that the primary language used in social psychology is English says a lot and most of the funding that is conducted to understand group behaviours in these weird countries are in Anglo-American and Anglo-European countries as well. This not only shows a huge lack of intercultural competence in the field of social psychology, but disregards the human diversity and differences that we have innately in our cultural context, in the field that literally studies human behavior. I said what I said! This brings us back to the question that we initially presented. Should we cancel social psychology for being problematic? Well. Not yet. After this massive call out by researchers, social psychologists have been getting it together. Currently, there is a push within the field of social psychology to step out of the comfort zone and classic examinations of human behavior and construct it in a more diverse way with more diverse samples, therefore challenging many of its assumptions and biases that already exist in the field. Results from social psychology are now more scrutinized than ever, which means that researchers are not to claim that certain constructs and certain behaviors are universal without cross-cultural examination. Intercultural competencies and diversity and inclusion initiatives have risen in these environments and its application to real world settings, helping researchers from weird countries incorporate different and diverse human experiences and perspectives in their research. And a new generation of social psychologists have emerged, making it more accessible and making it more diverse than ever. This new generation of social psychologists bring a unique and diverse perspective in not only the social sciences, but its application to different environments, such as business, public sector, government, and NGOs as well. And at GERM, we are at the forefront of such a movement, offering up-to-date, critical takes and views when it comes to diversity and inclusion, human behavior, and its application through intercultural competence. So make sure you're subscribing and learning more how we can move past weird psychology and create a space that offers different and diverse perspectives when it comes to human behavior.